gendered or not? Does it show preference for women or men? This is the question that we would try to answer in this part. We can know it through workplace discourse analysis because discourse analysis is the only way through which we can see the relationship of gender with our language and especially with reference to workplaces here. So, if we want to know this, so whatever language is used at workplaces, we would analyze it. So, this is how discourse analysis plays a very, very important role in the study of language and gender. This time, to answer our question, whether workplaces are feminine or masculine, they are genderized or gendered, we are taking example of New Zealand. Why? Because New Zealand, this society is organized along traditional roles of gender. The whole society is organized according to cultural roles, separate roles for men and women in that society. Usually men dominate in New Zealand. So, New Zealand is a gender based society as Britain is a class based society. We can also quote example of Pakistan. Pakistan is also a gender based as well as a class based society. Uh, we uh, see division of our society along these two variables. But currently in New Zealand, coming back to the same context, just to understand the international scenario we are taking and that scenario is comparable with Pakistan, uh, we are taking example of New Zealand here. But currently women are also seen on the forefront, that means a change is taking place under global effect, under awareness about equality and justice for women, etc. in New Zealand. And uh, this change uh, shows that New Zealanders are also moving away from social essentialism. Essentialism here means that the roles are essentially defined, predefined by the culture, by the conventions. We see women as prime minister, leader of the opposition, chief justice, attorney general, governor general, top positions in companies like telecom and chief executives in different government and private offices in New Zealand. And this too happens in Pakistan these days. But if we see history of these women, this is the point which they make, the researchers make that uh, uh, they think that this may be because these women, most of these women who uh, enjoy all these higher posts and positions, they had no brothers, they had no other family member, children, etc. But this was, uh, uh, this was the case with their sample which they took with the research with. Usually, we see in New Zealand, for example, this is the most recent example in uh, 2023. We are talking uh, in 2023 here. So, see this Jacinda Ardern. She remained Prime Minister of New Zealand uh, uh, up to uh, Jan 18, 2023. And she was very successful Prime Minister. Okay. Overall, workplaces remain gendered in New Zealand similar to those in Pakistan. This is the overall condition. What makes workplaces feminine and masculine then? That is our main question. Gender composition of the workforce, number one. The people who are doing a particular job. Is there any gender composition of that job that this work would be done by men and this work would be done by women? 
or the nature of the work demands that this would be done only by women and uh, by men plus speech styles these three factors would decide whether the workplace would be uh, feminine or masculine we are already familiar with a gendered speech styles some are again reproduced here in a uh, left column we have feminine speech styles in uh, right we have masculine women are indirect and men are direct in their talk they are more imposing and women are indirect they are more polite and they uh, try to say public face of the addressee they are conciliatory and men are confrontational conciliatory uh, they want patch up kind of thing and men like to confront to debate to argue uh, in their talk women are facilitative they facilitate their addressee and men are competitive they show their superiority their supremacy uh, uh, about the thing which they are talking about and uh, women are collaborative they try to spread their talk uh, around this audience and uh, men on the other hand they like to be autonomous and they don't like any interruption and uh, uh, women they make minor contributions to their talk and men they dominate talking we have already said this that they take more time in talk supportive feedback is given by women but men are aggressive usually especially when they lack arguments and last women are person oriented they give importance to relations and emotions and passions they take care for other other uh, other oriented and uh, men they are task oriented but in these oppositions communicative goals now we see that workplace its composition nature of work and speech styles of men and women which are different on these grounds these three things would decide whether you would call a workplace office organization feminine or masculine but one thing that is pointed out after discussing this research about new zealand these researchers say that in these oppositions stylistic choices communicative goals of the speaker they are ignored and number two other social factors which also interact with gender and we cannot see impact of gender in isolation of these factors they are ignored here for example the age of the speaker the religion the race the ethnicity these things are ignored it means there is a question mark on these oppositions regarding these Uh, speech styles so we need to consider them uh, along with these factors so here i give you a task for practically understanding these ideas watch a drama of long duration from any channel note these features preferably if you see this drama uh, in english language note these features and if you watch it from urdu channel then try to translate those features in english this is the requirement of this task note these features in dialogues of male and female the features which we have discussed features of speech styles and you can add any new features uh, to this list if you note uh, in your observations so we conclude in gender based societies like new zealand and pakistan workplaces are definitely gendered however intersectional approach should be used to discuss these opposition intersectional this term is used to sum up all the factors which we should consider along with gender the age the class the race the ethnicity this is called intersectional approach